I am Nick. I'm John Luke, and we're the Wallace Warriors, also known as the WWE Gays. And today it's another episode of Have You Met Jenna? Hi. Hi, Jenna. I'm Jenna. How's it going? I'm great. How are you guys? Doing great. Doing really Doing well. Great. Yeah. It's so funny. It's like it's so weird seeing people like still being in these Zoom rooms all the time and now recording in zoom rooms you know like we were we were so used to being in workshops and things like that but now that we're using zoom for so many aspects of our life now it's kind of like become a normalcy in a sense so yes so welcome thank you and it's a little different for me i'm on the other side of the mic so yeah (laughs) yeah because actually what you want we want to share that you are a ww coach uh out of winnipeg right yes Yes, I'm, well, I live in Winnipeg, yeah. But now with Zoom, it doesn't really matter where you live because I touched exactly. and got to know people from every co- coast to coast, so it's great. Yeah. That's awesome. So let tell us a little bit about yourself, Jana. Oh, well, I'm Jana, I'm 50 years old. I've uh, been a WW member pretty much most of my life and uh, it feels like it anyway. But uh, this last rodeo, my I started 2016 and I was at the highest weight I'd ever been at. And now I've been, uh, I reached goal and maintenance and did that for 18 months it took me. I lost 127 pounds and uh, yeah, <laughs> I weighed 285 when I started, 284.8. And wow. now, and now I've reached a, a new milestone in my life. Like I actually, I'm I'm above the BMI, but I've never hit the BMI. So it's nice now that WW recognizes a healthy eating zone. And uh, yeah, I just happen to be one of those people that fit above it. So, yeah. So a question for you, you said the last, so in 2016 is when you started the last part of your journey. So previously you've been a WW member as well, but didn't oh, find absolutely. success. Oh yeah, I did. I always, I was always great at losing weight and that was never the issue for me. It was always uh, keeping it off. I never had Mm. the, uh, never, I never was able to do it. And well, I shouldn't say that in my twenties, I did, I lost 58 pounds, I believe. And I kept it off for seven years, but back then WW didn't recognize me as a lifetime member. I was at this weight, but I wasn't at the BMI. So Hence, I had to keep going, and but I maintained, and and I maintained that for seven years till I had my son, and and then I, you know, up up the weight went. I had a terrible pregnancy, was very ill, but had a healthy baby, and uh, I ended up uh, trying to lose uh, my second roadie with WW was in when he was three, so that was 2003, and I lost again, like I lost another uh 65 pounds that time but again i already knew in the back of my head that i wouldn't hit goal in lifetime with them because i wasn't so i got to a weight that i was comfortable with left again so the third attempt i did was uh, my heart wasn't in it you know i was doing it for somebody else and uh for somebody else's wedding you know that doesn't work for me i have to do it for me so this last time i was uh I was ready and I was going through a very stressful period in my life and I'm a stress eater. So I knew that I had to do something. And actually it was my doctor who came up to me. Like I went to him, I was very, I was suffering panic attacks and I went to him and he's told me, he says, there's so much going on that you can't control in your life. What is something you can control? And so I looked at, I looked in the mirror and said, well, I need to, I need to do something about my health, my weight, and I can control that. So that's what got me started, 2016. That's awesome. Um, yeah. I did want to add on something else to your to your story because a lot of members ask us this question. It's about loose skin, and I know you've discussed this very publicly about what you have done to for yourself. Um, can you talk about that a bit? Like, what got you to make that decision? Um, do you ever was it? How was it? Was it painful? Um, just just generally how it was. Oh sure, yeah, I had. Um... I hit I, when I hit goal and and lifetime. I I went through a period and I didn't become a coach. And I actually, if you believe it or not, I was suffering a bit from lack of self confidence at that point because I'd done all this work and I and to lose the weight, but I didn't feel good and I didn't feel confident. And I had I had a lot of excess skin, especially in the front and through the midriff. 
I had a, a lot of excess skin. The there. apron is what they call it. If I'm well, the mistaken, apron is right? lower. The apron is oh. lower. That's the panectomy. That's that's the one that uh, most people have. But I actually carried a lot of excess skin in my ribs, if you believe it or oh. not. So when like I went to um, a plastic surgeon, I you know I just what brought me to that decision was I was I, it was a lot of it had to do with self confidence, but a lot of it also had to do with I didn't feel good in my body. Like I I felt like I did all this work and I would look in the mirror. And I would see that excess skin as one, it was like a reminder of how badly I treated my body all these years. And two, I was covering up again. I wasn't, I wasn't wearing like the mini skirts that I, and the short shorts I wanted to wear. I had to wear longer shorts and I was, I, you know, I was, didn't dare tuck in a shirt or anything because I just didn't feel comfortable in my body. So I actually, and the did, reason I, go ahead. The reason I want that too, because uh, Jan, because for us, like we get this asked this question all the time, and I also have struggled with my skin on my body, um, and I'm, I often teeter between: do I do it? Do I not do it? And it's always a question I have in my head. Maybe someday. Right now, I'm not ready for it, but that's why I wanted to ask the question: like, what made you get there? Because it's very similar to what I go through very often. I look at myself in the mirror, I'm like, ugh. But I put a yeah. shirt on. I say, like, okay. <laughs> but yeah. <without> <laughs> Yeah, no, and I didn't feel I wanted to wear a bikini. I never worn one in my life. Like I wanted to do this, but I didn't feel comfortable. Wasn't confident to get out there and just let it all hang out. So, you know, tights and you can hide it, great. But you know, when you're when you're alone and you're looking in the mirror, and and my problem was is that I was thinking about that excess skin is still fat. Like I still had to lose mm -hmm. weight, and that was that was honestly the, probably the biggest thing that pushed me. So I did a little research on my own, and then I went to the, uh, my plastic surgeon here in Winnipeg. He's amazing, Dr. Mitchell. <laughs> I'll give him a plug. Anyway, he he was wonderful, and he the one thing I liked about plastic surgeons, this plastic surgeon in particular, is that I'd watched some videos on people getting their consults on you know. So they're these doctors are drawing all over these people, and I thought, oh great, like what's he gonna do to me? But you know, he was great. He sat there, he listened. He says, tell me what you want. And then I will tell you what can be done. So it was really, it was a really great um, positive experience. And yeah, I, I honestly, it was money well spent. Most uh -huh. people that uh, he warned me to like um, in Manitoba, we're lucky we have some of the skin removal covered if you've lost a certain amount of weight, which is great. So I had to, but he warned me, he was said like the panectomy is, is the apron. And he said, Manitoba Health does cover that. But he said, if I just do that for you, then you're going to have where you feel uncomfortable is in your rib cage. And you're not going to, you know, I have to take that skin and push it up. So it was, so he said, you wouldn't, you, you won't be happy with the final results. So he was the one who recommended this fear de leaves, they call it. That's the vertical cut. So I actually vertical. had 20 centimeters taken off my body. Took 20 seconds wow. off my body of excess skin, and he didn't have to do any muscle repair or anything to my abdominals. So there's another non-scale victory because I didn't need it. Right? That's amazing. That's phenomenal. And I, I love that you share this openly because I know it's something that we hear often. A lot of people say, "I don't want to do this journey because of the loose skin." Something else that you really said that you touched upon that really hit me was the fact that you lack self-confidence. Yes. Something that for people watching this right now who are who have attended Jana's workshop, a lot of us look at you and say, wow, Jana being not, not having confidence, she's like the confident queen right now. Like we see her all the time. So to hear that from someone today who's come gone through all this and said, I struggled with this before and look where I'm at today, a lot of people will look at you like, wow. I could be that person too. I can gain the confidence just like Janet did. So I just love that you shared that. Yeah. And you know, one thing that does bother me though with people and they're in the, uh, when they're losing, they're like, oh, I'm afraid to have all this excess skin and you know, it's going to hang there. I said, no, don't be afraid of it. That's like, it's like a trophy and you know, it shows you that you've worked very hard, but that should never be the reason why you're not losing weight. <laughs> I <laughs> never, ever. I completely agree with that, Jenna. I think a lot of times we sometimes use that maybe as an excuse, it's unfortunately, an excuse. right? Absolutely. It's an excuse. So we did have a question for you that I wanted to ask you as well. So 
I love how you've explained your journey and everything you've gone through so far, because like you've, you've obviously gone through a lot and have experienced a lot and it's fantastic. And a lot of people can relate to that. And I think a lot of people will now understand a different aspect of, you know, where you, the, came, from. Where you came from and the skin removal part, but throughout this entire journey, what have you learned about yourself? Oh, I've learned so much about me as a person and I, where do you begin? Where do you begin? Well, I've learned that I'm very patient and I learned also that I'm uh, like, cause I never would have been patient before and I would never have considered myself a patient person, but now I've learned the patience also slowing down a little. I've learned that's helped me, but I've also learned that I'm actually a pretty good public speaker. <laughs> I never would have, I never would have guessed that before. I never, this is not something I would get up and do before because I, yes, I lack the confidence. I, I wasn't myself. Now I feel like I'm myself. I feel, you know, and I, a lot of people tell me that I'm very outgoing and yes, but I am a lot to some people too. I have high energy and I never had high energy at, at, at my heaviest weight. Forget it. Like I was a couch potato and I sat and I did nothing, but now I have very high energy and I surprise myself with how much I can do now. Like, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's cool surprise. about what you said. You said that one of the things that you had to work on a lot was your, like your why and how you were, why you were doing this. And then um, you suffered a lot from uh, like anxiety and you were, you were, you had a lot of issues that seemed to affect your mindset. Would that be the pillar you think was the hardest for you to overcome? Or was that one of the easiest ones for you to overcome? Oh no, mindset is everything in, in the WW journey. Cause if, if you, like, and I, I've done the journeys before and I was always doing it for the wrong reason. Like I was always, I was on a diet and I was never making this thinking that it was going to be my lifestyle for the rest of my life. And I went through a period of time where I was very, um, I, I, I do very well. And I did all or nothing when I first started the journey. And then it hit me once when I was going on vacation and I was like, okay, well, I'm 75 pounds into this and I have, have to go on vacation. You know, am I, go I, am, I going, am I going to throw it all out the window for two weeks and just enjoy myself and forget it like I would in the past? Or is this different this time? And it was like a crossroads in this, in my journey, because it was like, no, I don't want to come back from this vacation 10, 12, 15 pounds heavier. And I don't want to dig out of that hole again. So this time I'm going to change. And I did some different things. I cut out the crappy desserts that I didn't want. I stopped eating the French fries because they were there. I had a drink and then I had a, then I had a full bottle of water and then I had another drink. I cut the drinking in half and I came back and I was down five pounds. I, love, <laughs> I kept up I the love, activity, you know, but I that was a huge that. crossroads. That was a huge crossroads in this journey. And it showed me like I had to work on the mindset pillar because that is the one that I'd never changed in the past. So. And what you just said there is you applied mindset to the other aspects of the journey by saying, I don't need to eat everything that's put in front of me. I don't have to eat it just because it's there. And I love that you shared that because we had the same realization. Mm -hmm. So it's right? funny how people have similar journeys who realize this is forever. At one point, you because we used to be the same way. Vacation means free for all. You can do whatever you want. And tracking doesn't happen. You eat whatever you want, drink as much as you want. An activity? How dare you ask me to take one, one hour, hour out of 24 You're that crazy. I'm not doing anything at all to yeah. get activity in. How dare you? And then we went on our first cruise that we, after we had lost our weight this time, and we did the same thing you did. We showed up and like, you know, I don't need all the fruity drinks. I love my amaretto. I'll stick to that. It's lower calorie with Coke Zero. I'll, I'll reduce the calories there. Oh, uh, I won't pick three indulgent meals and then I'll pick one instead of all three. I'll make breakfast zero points. It was all these different thoughts that I never would have thought of before because I thought back then, like you said, all or nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's probably the biggest change in this time around that. And I also, well, I can go on about um, when I hit goal lifetime and I didn't become a coach right away. I waited because I was, again, it had to do with the self-confidence. How was I going to get up there and tell all these lifetime members how to maintain weight when I had never done it myself? 
So that was another thing I could not. And my coach was nagging me like, come on, you need to do this. Like, I want you. <laughs> and I said, I can't do this yet. I have to learn that I'm, I can maintain my own weight and ch I've changed my lifestyle and I have to convince myself. So again, it's all of up here. And then once, once I figured that out, then, and then I became a coach. Yeah. You said that earlier too, which really impacted me as well as the fact that you said, oh, I knew how to lose weight, but I oh, need yeah. to learn how to maintain it. And I love that that's a huge aspect of this journey that a lot of people don't, don't seem understand. to understand that learning to maintain a weight at any time of the journey we, is beneficial. We tell everyone all the time, if you love wine and you've gotten rid of wine the entire time you were losing your weight and thinking that when you get the goal, you can bring it back and be okay. No, you need to find a way to have it today. You need to find a way to plan for it now so that when you get there, it's already part of your life. And you're not going to regain all this weight because you're reintroducing all these things you got rid of. Yeah. yeah. And I so, never, I never did that before. So this was, this was the way I changed and I've changed my lifestyle. Honestly, I, I used to feel sorry for myself. I did. I felt sorry for myself. I thought, why am I so different than everybody else? Why can't I keep this weight off? Like, I, it was because I never changed well, I my crazy. habits and my behaviors when I got to yeah. the point where I wanted to be. So it's that whole concept of I'm wanting to do something. I want something to change, but I'm not willing right. to do the work to make the change. Uh -huh. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, breaking a that, like that. A lot, lot of us are like that. So yeah. a next, another question that we have for you that we, we sure, I'm sure this has, has had a huge impact on, but the journey that you've gone through, how has it impacted others in your life? Your family, coworkers, uh, friends? What has it done? Oh, well, and they all, or most people who knew me before have seen a significant change. And I, I hope that I, I've inspired them to live healthier lives. I, I know I can count on two hands how many people I've inspired just from my past that have reached out to me now, uh, people from high school, people, all kinds of folks. But, you know, I, I, my son is a prime example. Like he, I can tell you a little story. My dad passed in June um, and the year before my son graduated from high school, that was 20, 2018. And then um, my dad passed 2019, just about the same amount of time. And my son was going to uh, college. So he was, he just graduated from high school, went right to college. And in that year, I saw him gain weight. But, you know, he's, he's in school. And this happens to so many people. Hey, it happened to me. <laughs> right? It happened to me too. A young I, adult, first yeah. time in college. You don't care. The freshman yeah. 10, right? Whatever they say. Freshman 10. 10. Oh, 10, yeah. 10, whatever. Well, his end up being 22 pounds. But how, how, he, how he know, and I didn't say anything. I could see it, but I didn't say anything to him because I knew. But, you know, as um, that when he had to put on his grad suit again for the funeral, um, he, uh, he goes, Mom, this is so tight. And I, I said, well, son, you've you know, you've been in school for a year and you've gained some weight. And, you know, he right away, he, he came to me and he says, well, I need WW, please help me. <laughs> so I got him signed up and he, he lost his 25 pounds and went back to his weight. And, and now I see him, he's 20 and he's a successful welder and he's doing well. But the thing I see is right now he's out at the gym. He's eating properly. He's not out, you know, like it's amazing I just and that's the, I love seeing that in people and they tell me when they tell me and that their families are being affected by their journeys and they're losing weight and the kids but what's most important is you see the children learning from their mom or dad or whoever's on WW and they see that I, and I love that I love when people can bring their habits and bring these these healthy and lives. change lives. lifestyles yeah You're yeah change lives like your son now because you decided to make a change your son now knows he knew to ask the help because he's seen you do this he's like i need to ask for the help now i don't want to wait till i'm 30 and ask for the help then i need the help now and he knew what to do now he's already programmed or not programmed but has the tools are in his hands to make the right choices going forward and that'll help him for so many years in his life oh it'll help him for his life i hope yes and, you, and he's you've got a guest visitor got a guest visitor Hi. right now <laughs> Well, my dog's laying down. He's quiet now. <laughs>
So the next question I want to ask you, Jana, is does your why still help you today? I know you said you had multiple whys that you've changed along the way, but your final one that you had this last time, is it still, does it still help you today? Oh, you know, that's, it's important that your why evolves with you, right? Through your journey. And, you know, I started with the fact that I needed, I got that wake up call from the doctor and I needed to lose weight. And I, you know, it was, it came off and that was always my why and my focus. And then a lot of it came, you know, it, it's evolved. I've actually gone through it five times. I'm now on my why. And now I, 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 my why is, is part of, I aspire to be healthy, happy, and, you know, inspire other people to join this and feel this good. I'm living my best life and it's, it's feels great. And I want everybody to feel like this. So. It's so fine. Cause that, that I know for a fact, like I, we, we see your, your workshops, we see the, I still remember the first time we saw you uh, we logged into a Winnipeg workshop and you invited us to your house. For yes. A barbecue. You, all, you had already spoken to the members about your, your annual summer barbecue. Yes. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for you guys to come to Winnipeg because we were supposed to come to Winnipeg at one point. We were planning it. Yeah. So we remember so that. We still have an open invite, I hope. Of course. <laughs> but I, I, I still remember from that day and like from that day, we created a bond with you because I think we share the same kind of mentality where we struggle for years. Yep. We are kind of kindred spirits in terms of that. Now that we've done this for ourselves, we want other people to be just as happy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what kind of, that's what this group is about. The, the people we've met along, all these virtuals and people that have kind of been glomming on to this group we've been creating. It's all these people who do want to push the, the, the word forward. And I think that's what's necessary. The, the more people can learn that you can live your life, still enjoy it, enjoy food, be del have delicious foods. There's just, control yourself a bit more, then you can still have a happy life and be happy. Like, I wish I would have known that lesson like yes. 20 years ago when I was struck my weight as a teenager, right? I sit here and it's so funny because we talk about having limits, having limits. But in my mind, now that I actually have created these boundaries for myself, I feel like I'm limitless though. I can do anything else that I wouldn't have been able to do before. I know. So it's like that whole juxtaposition of like thinking, that we can't do anything, but as long as you believe in yourself, it is doable. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. For sure. You know, maybe, uh, I also want to talk like things are not always easy, right? So maybe, maybe we could talk about what I went through this past year. I, yes, was, I was hoping you time. would, yeah, yes. I would love for you to talk about that. Okay. Well, well, when I first met you guys, um, in April, 2020, you know, COVID had just started and things were, you know, crappy, but it was great because we had this virtual thing and I was loving, loving every minute of it. It was great. And getting to meet people on this, on, like from all over the country and I was having fun. It was great and feeling good. And, you know, and then May came and then, and then it started to unravel a bit. And, um, I don't know. It, when something happens to you and you can't control it other than COVID, you know, it can, it can really take a toll on you. And what I'm talking about is, um, is what I went through. And in May, I noticed that, um, my hair started falling out and, you know, I had a lot of hair. I was gonna say, for those of you who don't know Jana, Jana's hair used to be long. down her back. I she used to have very very beautiful long hair and actually i'm going to tell you i've always had long hair my whole entire life and um and the reason was was because when i was seven my mom cut my hair really short like this and somebody told her that i looked like a boy oh what will he be having for dinner <laughs> so my mom, she said never again never. never cut your hair ever again looks good long keep it long no and my hair was really long beautiful beautiful hair and it was very um and when I was heavier, I used it as, as a security blanket and I would do my hair and makeup really nice so that people wouldn't look at the rest of me, right? Like, <laughs> so I always had very nice hair and I noticed that it was starting to fall out. Well, when you have a lot of hair, it's no big deal. But then it was to the point where it clogged my sinks, my shower, um, it was, and then I, and then it started to fall out. I was, I went to the doctor, I was diagnosed with uh, alopecia, which is, um, 
your hair falling out and you go bald. And I was to the point where it was happening. Like this is three weeks rapid span. Like, and it was, I was starting to notice different areas of my head that were going bald. And, um, I immediately started, you know, of course they did all like the blood tests and your thyroid and checked everything. Nothing. Of course it's not that. So, um, I went to a dermatologist, she put me on, um, steroids so I was on steroids all summer and it still continued my hair continued to the fallout to the point where I was completely bald on the crown of my head and poor woman that's very difficult to deal with because one it's society is not normal yeah. but it, it it's it's your beauty and your out outer shell and like that was always part of me and it was hard <laughs> I want you want to say one thing here. You did, and also you did say to us when we had a conversation. You said you worked so hard to get to the point where you got, and now your hair is not is is now leaving. The one thing that was your security blanket was leaving you. And yeah. I remember you, you were t- you're having a tough time at that point, just going through oh, that. The month of June was very difficult because I was I started to spiral down, and I, it was dark, very dark, and I went into a very dark place all along still coaching and being up and trying to be you know the same person that I, I, people expect me to be yet this other side of me was coming and it was dark it was it was very lonely and i was full of self pity and uh, but i learned from my journey that i could not turn to food and i had to find other ways to get out of this funk and of course like anybody going through this nobody would blame me for being depressed it was not fun and i and, and then being on steroids your weight it, it's that's part of the side effects it increases so i could see it in my face i could see my weight going up on the scale and it was horrible like it was not helping <laughs> so i did a challenge you guys were great i put it on there and i had some people do it it was a water instead of weighing I was struggling bringing back some of the old habits that came. I, I didn't like it. They were starting to come back. The negative thoughts, the, the daily weighing, it was awful. Like I, these habits had been gone from my, my life for so long and now they were coming back. And like you were starting from scratch, almost all over again, where in a drop of an eye, you now had to face a new reality in a sense. Yeah, it was it was a very difficult time for me. And if we wouldn't have had all of this virtual world and that I'm sure that my my eating would have been next and I would have gained a heck of a lot more weight than the eight pounds I did gain. And as soon as I was off the steroids, I went off of them in September and that weight dropped right off. So it was never that was never the issue. It was just but mentally, boy, did it play on me. And it was very difficult, very, very difficult. And I love that you share that. And what's, what's the biggest lesson I think you have from that is you took the time, you saw the habits come back, you tried to curb them as much as you could while going through this very tough time. But then you said it in September, you stopped taking it, the weight came off. And we tell this to a lot of people, you will go through moments in your life, no matter what, where stress and things will happen to you. Yeah. And yeah. if you take those moments and say, it's okay if I'm not perfect right now, but if I'm trying my best to do the best I can, Exactly. There is light at the end of the tunnel. I will get there. And that's what you did. You said, I'll do my best. I'll do this challenge. I'll try to do my best to keep myself sane what I'm going through, even though it's insane what I'm going through right now. And there will be light at the end of the tunnel. And I know you, as a coach, would tell anybody, and I know you did yourself, is you reached out for the help you needed well, when you exactly. needed it. Exactly. I had to, I had to, because I could see myself turning inward again. And I knew what that did for me in the past. I would bottle all of my emotions and hide them. And I knew that I couldn't do that this time. I had to, and the way that I shared this last part of my journey, oh my gosh, I never, when I was losing weight before, I would never tell you my weight. Are you kidding? Like, forget it. Like, <laughs> but I, and I knew like just this something this time, I, I knew I had to change everything I was thinking and doing because it wasn't, it never worked in the past. So this time I shared my star weight and I, sh- like, honestly, I went through my second journey. I'm going to tell you my second journey. I would, I, I got to the 50 pound mark and then somebody, 
I would stop telling them how much I lost after that because people were like, wow, you were like well over 200 pounds then, you know, like, <laughs> and I was like, but I, it didn't matter at this time. Like I just didn't care. And I just, yeah. I just, yeah. it, and it shouldn't care. I love that guys can just share their pain. Like, yeah. All right. So yeah. I, well, I, I, I think the thing I wanted the to say, Oh, go ahead. I was going to say the one thing about the weight though, it's sometimes it's, it's a hard thing to share because we had a hard time at first too. But I think when you get to a certain, yeah, we did, we did, we did at the beginning. It it was was shameful. It was shameful. Like if we felt ashamed of the fact that we let it, especially like when I say that I had been over 300 pounds at one point to me, that was like, that was the number I never wanted to cross. And I know I did cross it. So to me, that was a big thing. And that's a big thing for everyone. Yeah, I can see that. But the one thing I wanted to share about this also too was, um, like I, I, I let people in, I let select people in that know what I was going through all summer and they were fantastic. They were a wonderful support system and I don't know where I'd be without them. And you guys were part of it. So thank you. And, you know, you helped me and having to be able to uh, have somewhere to voice and talk about like my, my WW problems, because as a coach, you have expectations and people, you know, I, I, I'm not there to talk about me. It's not about me when I'm doing a workshop anyway, but you know, it's nice to have your fireside chats that I feel like I can be just a member and, and share my struggles. So I want to thank you guys for giving me that platform to do that. And I had, um, I had made a decision in September when I went off the steroids. I thought, you know, I was, my, the dermatologist asked, what are you going to do about your hair? Are you going to get a wig or are you going to let it see what happens? And, and then I also got, um, she said, we're going to try some steroid injections. So, and that really worked for me. I had um, steroids injected into my head. Sounds painful, but it was just these little pokes and she put them in the, the areas that needed it. And then I thought, and then, it started to grow and now I have a full head of hair and it's amazing. So you can get, maybe I can get steroids in my hair. hair. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. So but, yeah. And but the one thing I, I didn't want to um somebody asked me that my hairdresser actually. I went to her and she's like, Do you want to cut your hair? Like, what do you want to do? And I said, Well, I didn't want to at that point in September because I said, I don't want to give up. I wanna I have to keep that hope. I don't give up. And this is <laughs> like that to me, if I was going to shave my head, get a wig, that was like giving up. And I couldn't do yeah. that just yet. I had to, I had to see it through. And, you know, that, that day changed my mindset again into thinking that maybe this alopecia, instead of looking at it as a negative, let's look at it as a positive. And it made me a heck of a lot stronger as a person. Because I didn't, it, like, I have like the, the, you know, I have the outside physique, but I, you know, when you, you don't always have you the beauties. Said, <laughs> you said it earlier, Jana, you looked at your skin as being a, your armor and it was a part of you and you, 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 you cherished it for the time you needed to. And now you look at this new part of you and this hair you've now created. So you're so powerful and you're so strong. And, and also Jana is the creator of the fifth exactly. official pillar yes, of WW, yes. the, the community pillar. Uh, she's the one who spread it, spread it, spread the word out a lot more than, and we're the one to keep sharing it because we do yeah. agree that that is one of the most important things. So I'm well, glad we we're able to help you out and, and we're glad we can help anyone out. That's why we do this. That's why we said, that's why the three of us all do this. And when coaches come to see us we for inspiration hard. and guidance, it, it blows our mind yeah, because yeah. you guys to us are amazing and we couldn't do our, we could never our, without you guys. So thank you so much, Janet, for agreeing to do an interview with us today. I know that a lot of people will see this and be like, wow, I didn't even know that 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 person I go to see every week went through all of this. I'm so glad you shared your story. But if you guys want more with Jana, she'll be with us tomorrow night as our co-host on our fireside chat. So I hope you guys have questions for her because Jana loves to talk too, just like we do. So we'll be talking We'll be I don't know. Who's going to talk more that night? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be tough. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like below and subscribe to our channel. You can also find us on all social media. At the WW Gaze. And our website, www.gaze.com. Thanks again, Jana. Thanks, guys. This was fun. This is so much fun.